want it, let's do it. I mean, I think we're ready. My name is Austin Parenti, and I am the writer and director of The Wreck of Echo 10 4, episode three. I think it's good for a teacher to direct. At the college level, you might not see that as frequently because, you know, of course they want to give students the opportunity to make movies and to have big roles. And uh, there's certainly, certainly a place for that. But I love being able to direct because then I can mentor by example. Um, you know, it's really hard to tell students, hey, this is how it should be done and then expect them to go and do it perfectly the first time. It's really helpful for them to have an example before them so that they can at least start mimicking before they really cement their own talent in directing and they're able to do it in their own unique way. Three, two, one, action. Today we have a lot of extras and a lot of kids coming to set. Um, we're filming like the ballet scene where Giuseppe like watches his daughter and other girls perform and he loves it, but like all the other people in the audience hate it, so. And I'm not sure, I'm either gonna give you a cigarette or I'm gonna have you fall asleep, I'm not sure. Fall asleep and just be the best. I know how to do that really well. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. So right now we're at Art Basel. Eddie's on focus, we got Julian on camera, and me and Ella are tackling the sound, so she's watching the levels and I'm holding up the boom pole just to get the perfect audio for viewing pleasure. Come sit. They'll make us some pasta. We are done filming inside and we're gonna be filming outside now. So uh, in this scene uh, Giuseppe's gonna get the idea to slash someone's tires because he's a little bit of a bad boy if you know what I'm saying. That's awesome, awesome. Okay, start loading the van. We just need to grab one more shot, then we really can't like... Oh, yeah. We're trying to light a car, which is uh, deceptively hard because cars are just a bunch of reflective material, you know? Everything from the paint job and the finish to the windows themselves and the mirrors. Uh, so the first job is to knock down the amount of light that's hitting those reflective substances so that we can see through the window and see our actors act. So we've got this nice uh, negative uh, fill above me that's cutting down on the sunlight. Then we're trying to boost their luminance from within the car using little lights. Um, uh, 200. We even have a certain type of lens we put in front of the camera lens that restricts certain uh, reflections, kind of like sunglasses. It, it, it's bringing it up a little, but it's still a cool eight. And it's hot. Don't forget that. Roll sound. Speed. Roll camera. Action. Cut. So I want to do this next scene in a wider shot because it kind of plays well with humor. We're gonna have Giuseppe and Gio, um, our, our two criminals walking down the street planning to heist, to steal and destroy this house. Uh, so they'll walk through here in a nice long, long, wide take. The sun will hopefully be setting behind them. We'll have a beautiful blue hour. Uh, that's the very short time right after sunset when it's still light enough to keep filming, but it's certainly not sundown anymore. The sun is gone uh, and you're left with the bluish hue that's left in the sky for maybe a 10 minute window. In Florida, the sky gets kind of pinkish too, which I'm hoping for. Um, the dolly will be sliding with them all throughout their conversation until they leave the frame at this point. Uh, so it'll be about a 30 second shot. And the tough thing is with that, we're, we're fighting for sunlight. So if we start shooting that at eight, we get our first take, make some tweaks. By the time we go for our second take, it's 8.05. The sky looks completely different into 8.10, 8.15. And then at a certain point, we run out of light. So we'll see if it's even uh, achievable. We'll, we'll really have to cook. Hence why we're setting up now at 6.45 and we'll do some camera rehearsals. And uh, that way, when we do this shot, we're as ready as we possibly can be. We got 12 takes in total, uh, which is more, that's pretty excessive for me. That's more than I usually ever need, but it's a long shot. So it's important, you know, we have one take where the focus is right, the exposure is right, and the acting is spot on. So I think we have plenty to choose from. Uh, now we'll see what happens next. We're gonna be shooting in complete darkness. We're gonna wait for it to be black outside, 
and we will do our traditional lighting and see how it goes. I am the camera operator, so I work with one Mr. King to, you know, move the camera around, frame those shots, and uh, my buddy Eddie, he is first AC, he does the focus. Together we're a team. I think it's a lot of fun because of uh, the help I get from Mr. King. I think he's very talented, and uh, when I make mistakes, what happens a lot, I think, he's, I think he's nice to me. I think he allows me to make mistakes, and you know, I don't know, I, I can still learn from it without, you know, embarrassing myself. So, so how is being on a set full of kids? I... <laughs> it's phenomenal because you guys are so in it and you're dedicated and you love the craft. Like I've never been around people, kids especially, that are so in love with the craft as much as I am. Like it's like, it's phenomenal. And then you got a phenomenal teacher, Austin Parenti. Good name drop. Hey. hey. Really though. You guys are dead. You guys, it's really inspirational working with you all. I wouldn't even say it's a set of kids. I'd say it's a set of tiny professionals. Yeah. It doesn't feel like we're working with kids. It feels like we are. Uh, you guys are also carrying the set as just as much as anyone else's, and it's it's awesome. It's super inspiring to watch you guys. For the first time in Studio 70's history, you know we're we're able to hire so many professional actors, and the difference between that and you know just recruiting one of our parents or friends to come do the role is that they take the craft seriously. And so we go from instead being like puppeteers where we're saying, well, well, we'll do it like this, do it like this, and you're just trying to get a good performance out of someone who's not an actor. You go from that to collaborating with a real living, breathing artist who comes to the table with their own ideas and uh, unique desires for the character. We're shooting the van scene right now where they're kind of like intercepting a call or whatever. And then later on in the day, the only other scene we're gonna do is the dojo scene where we have Sensei Kevin, AKA Mr. DeMoss, as kind of like the sensei who's gonna teach Giuseppe, this big mobster dude, how to do karate. And it's just gonna be pretty funny though. Pretty funny to do. Two Italian actors are in a van, which is pretty much the summary of this entire episode. Today, I actually know almost nothing because today I'm acting, so um, from now on, you won't know me as Mr. DeMoss. My name is Sensei Kevin. I teach martial arts. We'll see. I'm acting alongside Giuseppe, which he is uh, quite large, so this should be pretty easy for me to act intimidated, nerdy, and scared, which are apparently what the characters are supposed to be, so we'll see. I'm listening to AWOL Nation. Oh, it's Imagine Dragons. It's to get in the character. Kevin listens to it, stop me. It's a really cool scene because it's all gonna be just one shot. It's just one long dolly for the scene. So there's a whole bunch of characters in the background with the kids and they're gonna be like fighting each other and trampling each other. But Senor Damas, that's gonna be the best part of the scene. <laughs> Guys, that'll be great. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> so today we are at the new Frank Tamino Student Union and we're going to be doing some quick exterior shots to uh, show off how the character of Giuseppe isn't a nice guy. He's going to be a little nasty today. Where's the money? I'm not going to wait anymore. I'm going to throw you off this list. Where's the money? Cut. It's great. That's all I need. Thank you. He was basically asking me if I had the money or not. Um, yeah. And did you have the money? I, I did not have the money. He shook me very violently. And action. It's raining. And uh, it's not supposed to be raining in the take, so we have we've gotten two takes so far. So we're either gonna stick with the two and settle, yeah, or we'll just wait out the rain. Um, which I don't. It's Florida, so you never know. Why are you wearing your hair wet? We are currently setting up for a scene in a bar, but we're not actually in a bar. We're actually in the studio, and we have the LED wall, and we have all these props and stuff. And right now, we're just waiting on Mr. King to finish lighting so that we can start shooting the shot. 
there is a courtroom scene where Giuseppe is talking about his previous jobs and one of them is demolition and so he was smashing these like sugar bottles. It's not real sugar but it's like chemically made and we had to fill them with water to make them look like beer bottles and then he had a bat to smash them. Remember it's three, two, one action. Ready? Three, two, one, action! So, uh, you can ask me any questions. No. Probably what I'm looking forward to most in directing is working with Nick Puya. Um, he is a fantastic guy, and we have just clicked immediately. You know, he's Italian and comes from a similar heritage than I do, and I think he really just understands the character. Look, I don't know why I'm here. I'm just a security guy. Uh, why don't you ask Stella? Miss Jackson, she'll tell you. Were you and Miss Jackson close? Yeah. <laughs> I never realized like how boring my summers used to be. Because I'm thinking about it. it's like if I like yesterday we ended at one, two, one, one, two o'clock. Yeah. And I came home and I was like, what else am I supposed to be doing? Yeah. I yeah. felt like so like I just I just like hung out with Gigi. We kinda just stared at each other for a while and it's like so what do you wanna do? <laughs> Today is my last day on set for the summer, and that is really sad. Oh my gosh, because it's been six weeks and it doesn't feel like six weeks at all. So it's literally, I'm kind of mad about how fun it was because the time literally flied. So it went super fast, so I'm just trying to make sure. I work really, really hard today, so it's really, really bad. And so it can go really, really slow. <laughs> So uh, the plan is for today, we have two major scenes that we're going to do. The first one is with Stella and Giuseppe. Giuseppe's teaching Stella how to do karate. They're doing like the whole like, horse dance thing that Giuseppe learned from Sensei Kevin. Rough day. Rough life. <clears throat> Wait, who? Who do you see? Winters? Ryan, get out of there. <laughs> so I walked over there to get BTS. I pulled out I pulled out my phone and I started recording, but I didn't know that I was in the shot and I kind of ruined it and it's my bad and I'm fired now, which means I don't get lunch. So I'm Sophia Kearns and I've just been kind of floating around um, new here, and I've been working a lot of things. Today, Lena helped, um, told me the whole Christmas tree method where you put the red and the green flag on each other for lighting. What else? I've been a grip. I've had to move a lot of things around, and then Ella taught me how to do sound. I really have been enjoying it so far. It's new, it's definitely new. I've never done anything like it before, and like the, I think the first hour I was in here, like on Wednesday, I was just like, I love this. It was, we had barely even done anything, but I was just like, I love this, this is awesome. In our next scene, um, little Bryn is gonna jump in the pool here, and Nick will be kind of distracted. He's, he's reading through some pamphlets of different schools that he could send Bryn to. And he sees one that he can afford, actually, just by being the bodyguard here. He doesn't have to do any criminal activity at all whatsoever. An honest day's wage and a good moderate school. But then he sees a really good school. It's a little out of his price range, so he'd have to stick with the mob, and he's got to choose here and now what path is he going to take. Is he going to continue in criminal activity just to afford a slightly better school? Or will he settle? Is moderate enough? So let's see. Cut. Very good. That's a wrap. Yeah. Wait a second. No. No. He's got the bell and the They were having a great time I celebrating the end of a hard yeah. week.
okay. and uh, what they don't realize yet is they've got to help us out. So, and nothing can get wet. Anyone else want to help We have to clean up. Come on, guys. Hey, Eddie. Wait a second. Hey, Eddie. Come on, Eddie. Come on, Eddie. Come on, Eddie. Today we're filming first is the fight scene um, between Dan and Giuseppe. Dan and Trey actually walk in on Giuseppe tying up his wife. Then so finally, you know, they have this conversation with one another and they do a little fight before Dan runs off to the airfield. And action. <laughs> we are going to shoot a lot of handheld stuff because since it's fight, you know, we have to kind of have a little bit more motion in the camera. We'll shoot things at certain angles so that it looks like they're getting hit because their face is covering the angle. We're actually throwing some breakaway glass today too. Um, so it, it shouldn't be bad, um, it's just a lot um, because it is a fight scene, but yeah, it should be good. There's a part where one of the characters grabs a vase and some mugs and just chucks it at the other character um, straight on his back and it's supposed to shatter all over his back. So obviously we don't want to actually hurt the actors. So what we do is we have props that are specific for film. It's basically like a vase made out of candy so that when it makes contact with the actor's back, it won't hurt him. It'll just be um, like a little sprinkle of glass, but on film, it'll look like actual glass shattering against his back. The thing with it being fragile is that like, when handling it, it could break at any moment. So we have to be super careful with it. Action. And action. My name is Stephanie Gomez uh, and I'm Stella in the show. <laughs> One of the things that I love the most about Stella, it's that at some point of my life, I feel like I had that need of being loved. And I think that's what makes her so human. I think that's why I fell in love with the character. I love the character and I love the script. So for me, when I read all this stuff, it was so exciting. Like it was not like, oh, I don't want to do this. No, for me, it was like, I want the day to come for me to do this and this scenes. I think the boss scene with, with Lara was so much fun. Right now I'm about to do a scene that I think it's gonna be also really funny that um, Nick has to like drag me out because I'm doing something to the plane. <laughs> I'm not gonna say what. I feel like working with different directors has been really cool too. In my episode, Lena was the director. Like she has this quality of working with actors, even at her age, that I don't know, she has something special about her. And then with, with Austin, it's been incredible too. I feel like he knows what he wants and he knows how to ask the actor for that. My, th my big thing is when I do a feature, well, you have to make sure that your character is the same throughout and you want to have an arc you know as a human being and your whatever your objectives are your overall objectives but that's why I'd always ask Austin hey Austin is am I intact with my character like is my continuity there is it matching every single scene I've been on I've been thank God and my agents I've been on a lot of sets and this is by far one of my favorite ones because like I've, I'm so like I'm redundant like I've been saying the same thing since I started with you guys is that I've never seen so much passion in the craft before and it's so inspiring like to see everyone with so much passion as much as like I have passion for the craft. It's not work but it makes being on set very enjoyable and just have fun and be free as an actor. Today they're doing the fight scene where they get into a gasoline fight. We don't want to actually spray the actor in gasoline so we're gonna fill a water gun like a super soaker with apple juice. Go a little fast. Come on, come on, come on. Cut. 
Isabel. But that's, it. that's a wrap. Oh. On episode three. Oh, double clap. I was wondering who would shake my hand. <laughs> it's the last day on my episode, episode three, and uh, that's pretty sad because um, it has been such a blast. I really do think um, my particular giftings lend themselves more toward directing than producing, so I've had the most fun in these past two weeks. This was delightful and I'll be sad to see it go. I just love working with these actors. I love mentoring students in the art of directing. Uh, it was such a privilege to work with Lena again, uh, one last time. And you know, her last day was uh, Friday. And I don't think any of us really quite processed that until it was over. Um, and I remember talking to her and just thanking her for her commitment to the program and uh, the friendship and joy that she's brought to set. And then we both kind of went our separate ways and she told me she walked in the door of her house and just started crying. Uh, I got in the van and I got really choked up. <laughs> um, it just sucks. You're a family, you spend so much time together and you see these, these students grow and become such fantastic young human beings. And you've got that golden, those golden couple of years where you see them every single day and then suddenly not at all. We'll see her at the premiere. I, I hope she'll visit often, but she's gone. And soon so will Isabel and Ryan and Garrett will go back to college. All of these guys. And so as a teacher and I suppose as a parent, you just kind of you deal with it, you move on. <laughs> um, but it's never the same. The beautiful thing that gives me hope and joy are the freshmen who have joined us though. You know, just as Lena was stepping out, her sister Gigi stepped in. Isn't that amazing, you know? And she's been just as committed and just as hard of a worker as her older sister has been. And while we don't have that deep relationship yet, I'm sure we will. Not, Lena and I didn't have it this time last year either. I see people like Ryan Winters and Zane and uh, Camilla dedicating so much time and effort here. Th certainly what we've lost will be replenished. It'll be in a different way. It will never be the same, but it won't be worse either. It'll just be new. And that's the horrible curse of the teacher is constantly having to say goodbye to some of the most beautiful fantastic people you'll ever know.